listen to your breath. Please welcome author, humorist, and your bedtime storyteller, Dylan Brody. I'll lay over two. We've got to stop meeting like this. Paul wrapped Daniel in a hug, oblivious to the woman who very nearly tripped over his rolling carry-on. Welcome back to the homeland. How is the flight? Long. He disengaged from the hug, grabbed the handle of the luggage, and steered it toward a table. It's good to have my feet back on the ground. They checked your luggage all the way back to Boston? Yeah, it'll, it'll meet me when I get there. Daniel nodded. Paul dropped the strap of his shoulder bag over the extension handle of his rolling case. You, you want anything? I'm having scotch. No, I'm okay. Right, you have to drive. Yes. Everyone always has to drive in Los Angeles. I don't know why they even stock alcohol. No, it's in case you and mom come to visit. That's less funny than you imagine. You know what? Get me a coffee. Okay. Paul abandoned Daniel, heading for the bar. Daniel watched him take the few steps, the ever-present limp more pronounced with the effects of the long flight and his father's age. Paul looked smaller than Daniel remembered, thinner. After a moment of conversation with the bartender, Paul returned empty-handed. They'll bring it over. Okay. I got the sense that he was annoyed with me for not wanting the waitress. Okay. They spoiled me in India. Treated you well, did they? Incredibly accommodating. I felt like a star, I tell you, a star. He raised his hand in a gesture that was intended to seem grand and self-mocking, but actually had the look of a man awkwardly screwing in a light bulb. Well, there's nothing like an airport server to ground a person, Paul snorted. It looks like they're going to bring me back next year for significantly longer. Cool. There's an arts council in Mumbai. I think I can be helpful. They want me to put together a long-term strategy for curation and scheduling. That sounds sort of up your alley. They don't say scheduling. They kept saying calendaring. It was so hard not to correct them every time. I can only imagine. I hate it when people verb their nouns. That's funny. I don't think it's mine. Okay. I mean, you probably shouldn't use it. I wasn't going to. I think it's from Danny Simon. Neil Simon's brother, Danny Simon? Yes. Do you know him? No. Okay. A waitress brought Paul's scotch and put it on a small paper napkin. She put a cup of coffee in front of Daniel with a small bowl filled with small plastic half and half containers. Daniel picked one up. He read the label aloud. Ooh, half and half and half. Now with 50% more. Paul said, that's funny. Yeah, that's not mine. Paul said, okay, I wasn't going to use it. Daniel said, I got that from Opus Moreski. I don't know who that is. He's the Danny Simon of today. So he's Bruce Valanche's brother? Daniel chuckled. No, that would still be the Danny Simon of yesterday. I thought Danny Simon was the Danny Simon of yesterday. Danny Simon is the Danny Simon of at least two Thursdays ago. So you came to meet me at the airport just to remind me that I'm old? And I'm not the one who started with shtick from Danny Simon. Paul chuckled. He sipped the scotch. He spun the little stir stick, then tapped it on the edge of the glass and set it on the napkin. He lined it up carefully, parallel with the edge of the napkin, and then pushed the overhanging end with his thumb so that it lay flush. Lindsay couldn't make it, huh? She said she had a meeting. Who has meetings this late in the day? People who are well enough connected to get meetings, but not important enough to get drive-on passes? I don't understand this city. I know. Then, after a short pause, he looked into his coffee cup and said to the beverage, I'm not sure I do either. Paul became suddenly interested. What's that about? Daniel shrugged. I just booked another little mini tour. Comedy stop at the Trop in Vegas, then up to Reno, Park City, Salt Lake City in Utah, then across to Redding, back down the coast, stops in San Francisco, San Luis Obispo, Santa Barbara, then I'm back home. That sounds good. Feels like I'm going in circles. I thought this was the life you wanted, kid. Nobody moves to Los Angeles because they want to be on the road. I thought I'd be rich and famous by now. Is that really what you want? It really, really is. Paul shook his head sadly. Daniel sipped his coffee. 
he let his stir stick drip onto a napkin and then stood it on end, holding it upright with the pressure of a fingertip on its top. And what does this have to do with your sister? What? Who is Lindsay meeting with? Doesn't matter. She's doing great, thriving. I'm proud of her, really. I thought she was living in a crappy apartment and coming to yours when she needed air conditioning. Yeah, she's looking for a new place now. Oh, I don't think I knew that. Yeah, she, she placed a script. You know that, right? Yeah, she called your mother while I was overseas and emailed me. She got into the guild, she said. Yeah. But you're touring. You're getting bookings. Yeah, I don't need more bookings. I mean, of course, I need more bookings. But I need the meetings. I need to, I don't know. I need to get invited to the right parties. I don't understand this city. Yeah, you said. You know how young you are, don't you, Daniel? Daniel shrugged. Doesn't matter how much time I've got if I spend it all running in circles. Lindsay said you helped her a lot with her first script. Yeah, but she's doing what she's doing on her own. She's, she runs in the right circles. Paul turned his glass slowly on the napkin, careful not to disturb the placement of his stir stick. This city is saturated in desperation. Yes, desperation and fear. Huh. What are you afraid of? Daniel thought about it for a moment. He winced, hating his answer. I'm afraid of becoming the Danny Simon of tomorrow. He's had a long, respected, and storied career. Yes, Daniel said, as Neil Simon's brother. Listen 